Hello, in this video, I'm going to talk about the stress strain curve. Uh, so we just talked about stress and strain in the last couple of videos. Um, here, we're look, gonna look at the stress strain curve, which is graphical representation of the relationship between stress and strain of a material. Okay, so stress and strain are constantly changing during movement and are extremely difficult to measure in biological materials. So in living movement, it's next to impossible to accurately measure stress and strain um, in somebody who is moving. Uh, but experimentally, there are ways to measure stress and strain of different materials, but most often um, it would be either a sample taken from a living uh, participant, in which case it's living tissue, but it's been removed from the person. It would be like a biopsy of tissue. Um, so the properties might not be the same anymore because it's been removed. Um, and a lot of these studies are done with cadavers, which of course um, in a deceased uh, participant, um, of course those properties are going to change because you know there's no more blood flow, there's no more body warmth, all of those things. Um, so experimentally, um, researchers do their best to estimate the stress and strain properties of a variety of different types of tissues. Um, and it's very, very difficult, if not impossible, to directly measure those things in a living, moving person. Um, so thankfully, it's not super important that we know the precise values of stress and strain, um, but rather if we're working with a type of tissue like an injury rehabilitation um, or we're trying to optimize performance or prevent injury, um, it is really helpful to understand the stress and strain properties of the tissues that you're working with. So it's really helpful to understand the characteristics of how tendons and ligaments uh, respond to stresses and forces um, or how bones respond to forces and so on. So that's why we wanna know about the stress strain curves. So it's important to know the characteristics and complex behaviors of different tissues, again, because it will help us prevent injuries with athletes, improve performance, um, and then especially, this is definitely true in injury rehabilitation. Um, so if you're working with um, people who have torn ligaments or that sort of thing, it's very helpful to understand the properties of the tissues that you're trying to help the person heal. So different biological materials have different stress and strain properties, although strain is usually proportionate to stress. Okay, so usually more stress equals more strain. Um, I gave the example in another video of concrete where that isn't necessarily true, um, that stress can increase, increase, increase until all of a sudden the material fails. And so in that case, um, stress and strain aren't necessarily proportionate um, but in most cases, and especially in the body and biological materials, it's proportionate. Okay, so as stress increases in a tissue, strain also increases. And that goes for bone and everything else. Just because we think of bone as being very strong, um, it actually is more flexible than you realize. There's more compliance than you realize in bones. So an elastic modulus represents the relationship of stress and strain for a specific material. Um, it's where we take stress and divide it by strain. And then we represent that, we represent the elastic modulus graphically as the stress strain curve. So that's what we see in the picture here. This is just an example of one, um, but a stress strain curve would look different for every single material that you are analyzing. Okay, so there's a separate stress strain curve for tendons and ligaments and bones and muscle and fascia. Um, so every material or every type of tissue would have its own unique stress strain curve. Um, and tendons and ligaments are extremely similar and made of the same type of tissue. So you'll see those represented together often on stress strain curves. Um, but we could feasibly study the difference in stress strain properties between tendons and ligaments, and then we would have two separate stress strain curves. Okay, so it's a graphical representation of the elastic modulus of a material. Um, most stress strain curves begin with a linear portion. So like in the picture here, you see on the left side where it says elastic region, that's the linear portion where we're going from that bottom left corner and we're seeing stress and strain increase in a linear way. 
Uh, so most curves begin with a linear portion and then it can go in any direction after that, depending on what the material is. So it'll usually become more curved after we get past that uh, linear portion. So the elastic region is the linear region or the, the area um, under our linear line here. Uh, so it's the linear portion of the stress strain curve that represents the amount of stress a material can withstand and still return to its original shape after the stress is removed. Okay, so the elastic region of a material, that's where we can apply a stress and we have whatever amount of strain, so whatever amount of deformation that's caused by that stress, but it's within um, an amount where that material can still return back to its original shape when that stress is removed. So it's like if I take a rubber band, okay, so I take a rubber band and it's at rest here, and then I apply a tensile stress to stretch it, as long as when I remove that tensile stretch, or stress, that it, re it returns back to its original shape once that stress is removed, that means we're still within the elastic region. So as long as the amount of stress I am applying is low enough that the amount of deformation I cause still reverses completely, it reverses 100% back to the original shape and, and length and, and uh, qualities of that material, then I'm still in the elastic region. Okay, the yield point that we see in the, um, on the stress strain curve here, all the way at the top there, it's beyond the elastic region, represents the magnitude or the amount of stress that causes permanent deformation, and it forms the boundary between the elastic region and the plastic region. The plastic region, which is probably on the next slide, is where some amount of the deformation we caused becomes permanent. Okay, so the yield point is representing the amount of stress that was applied to the material that caused there to be permanent deformation that cannot return back to its original shape when the stress is removed. So like, I'm sure we all are familiar when we have a rubber band and you use it a lot and you stretch it a lot and like uh, especially anybody with long hair if you're putting your hair in a ponytail or whatever you're stretching it significantly so you're applying a lot of um, stress tensile stress to that rubber band which is causing a lot of deformation and when you're doing that a lot and it's you're keeping that stretched for long periods of time and you're stretching it beyond really its capacity to return back to its original shape, then over time your rubber band gets bigger and looser and looser. So what that means is once you, the rubber band is getting bigger and looser, it means that you have entered the plastic region. You've passed the yield point and it means that you have applied more stress than the rubber band can tolerate while still being able to return back to its original shape and, and size once that stress is removed. So you've applied so much stress to it that now some amount of that deformation, some amount of the stretch that you're applying will remain permanent. So it might still kind of rebound close to its original shape, but when there's any amount of permanent deformation, permanent change in its shape, then it means we've passed the yield point and now we are in the plastic region. So at that point, we're no longer linear Okay, the linear part of our curve is only in the elastic region, and then we reach the yield point, and then in the plastic region is where the curve can look all sorts of different ways, depending on what that material is. Okay, the plastic region, that's the nonlinear portion of the stress strain curve. Uh, that's where the material is continuing to deform in response to the stress that's being applied, uh, but it will only somewhat return to its original shape after the stress is removed. So let's think again about our rubber band. If you think about strain as being the percent of change of that material, then if you think about it, once you reach the yield point and now our rubber band is overstretched, now when I stretch it again, its resting length is already bigger. So there's going to be a, less, a lower amount of stretch when I stretch it again 
So the change in its shape is going to be less when I'm starting from an already stretched out position and going into a fully stretched position, that amount of change will be less than when my rubber band was smaller and I went to the same amount of stretch. Okay, so that's why once we reach the yield point, the curve usually will be a little bit less steep. So we'll go from that linear portion and then usually it'll kind of taper off a little bit and curve out once we reach that yield point. And that's because there's less strain happening in the plastic region compared to the stress. So we don't continue at that same trajectory. So there'll be some deformation that's permanent in, in this plastic region and some that's not. So again, um, the rubber band will still retract back somewhat close to its original shape, but some amount of that stretching will remain permanent because we're in the plastic region. Okay, that's all I have for you here, and thank you for watching.